Hello, how are you? Hope you're well. Welcome back. All that kind of stuff. Um, today I'm going to make marmalade. It's a Scottish thing. It's Dundee marmalade. Um, it's not really Scottish. I tried to find out why it was Scottish and I couldn't find out why it was Scottish. The story is a ship broke down in one of the docks in Dundee. It was carrying the Seville oranges. So the local people took Seville oranges and made Dundee marmalade. But apparently that was like disproven by food historians or something. I don't know. Um, so I, I don't know how Scottish it is other than I know that it's not Scottish at all and it's actually Mediterranean in in history. Um, I think the Romans are the earliest people to make something similar with honey. Anyway, we're making it so um, we're making Dundee marmalade. The recipe for that. Um, the reason we're making it is it's January and you get Seville oranges in January and February and um, they're, you don't, they're not around for very long. I think they're like, there's like four or six weeks or something of the year. Um, so when you get them, you need to get them. Um, you can freeze them. So if you get them and you think, oh, I don't, I don't want to the risk of like, he's not being here next week or whatever, if you're that kind of guy, because I'm that kind of guy, you can absolutely um, just buy them and freeze them and then just defrost them when you want to use them because you're going to boil them in a pulp anyway so it really doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, we have Seville oranges. The reason people use Seville oranges for marmalade um, mostly is because there's tons of pectin in it and pectin is what's good for marmalade and stuff. In this video I'm also going to show you how to sterilise your jars for your marmalade if you're making pickles, chutneys, jams. What's this called? Marmalade. If you're making any of those things, um, you have to sterilise your jars and have to sterilise your jam jar lids as well. So I'll show you that too. This is going to take me all day, so but for you it won't. Hopefully this video will be no more than like 25 minutes long. But it, I mean, if you're going to do this, you have to have a full day because you're boiling it for like two hours or simmering it for two hours and all that kind of stuff, right? So just. Give yourself all day. Don't give yourself any stress. Just make it a nice chill out day. Wear your jammies. I must say, it was snowing today. I got up at eight and I went to the gym. It was snowing, it was cold. And I've not hit up since. So I've had a shower and now I am wearing my husband's onesie because it is damn cold in this house. So get your jammies on, get yourself a nice cup of coffee and let's spend the entire day making marmalade. That. Hello. Okay, so for marmalade, you're going to need obviously oranges. Here I have 1.3 kilo of Seville oranges and wine A actually. I've got 1.1 kilo and then I've got this big massive orange at the bottom because I was not going to buy another full box of Seville oranges for like one orange worth. So basically, I'm going to use like almost all of this orange. Um, and then all the rest of this. Um, when you wash them, obviously you need to take the buttons out as well while you're washing them all. Um, and ideally, you should have 1.3 kilo of just Seville oranges, but I mean, it's marmalade. Like, you boil it to a mush, it really doesn't matter as long as it's orange. But um, yeah, I just made up the bulk with this big orange. Then you're going to need sugar, so I have 1.3 kilo of sugar here. The sugar I'm using is a golden castor sugar. Um, I read somewhere that golden castor sugar is the best sugar to use because it can caramelise a little bit, it's more tasty and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can use any sugar you want, really, honestly. Like, just normal white sugar is fine. You're going to need two lemons. I have put a lime in here. Um, you don't have to use a lime. The recipes that I've seen don't call for a lime. But I think that I'm going to use probably half of this lime just for a bit of a different flavour. But two normal sized lemons is good. I have two just on the cusp of being smaller lemons because I am using a little bit of the lime. Um, again, optional. If you don't want to do that, just use two normal sized lemons. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is take your Seville oranges that are cleaned and the buttons removed. You're going to want to cut them in half and then you're basically going to juice them. Um, I 
um, that old fashioned freak that doesn't have an electric juicer of any kind. So I am going to be here all day. Um, so I'm going to cut the camera off just now, but I'm basically just showing you what you're doing for the first orange and then I'll be back in 25 million years. When I'm juicing the oranges, what I'll do is I will juice it completely so there's nothing left in it. Put it in a separate bowl just to the side of me. So put the skins in there and then any of the pulp and the seeds and whatnot I will put in this wee bowl. Like so. I will see you shortly. Six and a half hours later. Okay, so this is everything that came out of my oranges. Here are all my orange sort of halves. And this is all of the juice from my oranges. So now what we're going to do is juice the lemons in half a lime. Add that to this liquid. So we'll do that now. I don't think you need to watch me do this. So I'll do it once for the lemon. To be honest, what I should have done there is rolled the lemon. If you roll it, you'll get more juice more easily. But yeah, anyway, so yeah. Roll it, cut it. If you have sensitive skin at all, um, or a fresh tattoo or any, any sort of cuts or anything, put gloves on while you do this, because if you don't, it will uh, sting. Sting a lot. Sting loads and loads and loads. Um, I'm just going to throw a cross into the wind and just do it. For these, we are not going to keep the rinds, I guess, really. You could if you wanted to, if you want to put lemon rind in with your marmalade. I suppose you could, but... I'm not going to, because it's far too bitter. Once you've just done, put it in with the rest of it, and then we just keep going. So I'll be back in two mentos when I've done this. Okay, so we in here we have all the orange juice, the lemon juice, and a bit of lime juice. We'll get this lime away now, we don't need it. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the bowl, which is full of all of our pips and our sort of fleshy bits from the orange that we squeeze the juice out of. And we're going to take all of these oranges that still have a lot of flesh and stuff inside and we're going to scoop that out and add it to that pile. So what you're aiming to do is get as much of the flesh out of the orange as possible so you just have the peel left because this peel is going to be cut up and put into your marmalade and that white stuff just doesn't taste very nice when you're like having to eat it. So. I'm not showing you the best here, but you can either put it down and then scrape the edges like so. And you can see, if I pop it inside out anyway, hopefully you can see that there's like peel showing here, so I just need to get sort of these white bits off and be left with just the peel. I hope you're focused on that camera, you better be. You won't. Okay, I'll try again. So this is the peel that you want to keep and this is the white stuff that you want to get rid of. You see? So you'll be left with all of this kind of stuff. You just put that in your wee bowl there. All the peel that has been scraped out, we're going to put in this bowl. And then we basically just keep going. Once you get into the swing of it, it is easier. It doesn't matter if your rind snaps or anything like that, because obviously you are going to cut it anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Obviously, you don't have to have rind in your marmalade. I just like to put it in. I guess if you didn't put it in, you could skip this entire bit and then have more time in the day. Now you have a rough idea of what I'm doing. I'm going to, again, 
stop the camera and come back to you once all this is done. Eventually. Okay, so now I have carpal tunnel, um, you'll find that your wrists will be very sore by doing all those things. So we now have a pile of rinds that I've, I've scraped as much out, that's a terrible example, I think I gave up in life in that one. The majority of them should look like that, where the sort of white is scraped out. Just scrape out as much as you can, really. So now that we have a huge pile of this sort of peel and a huge pile of this mulch, we're going to take the peel and slice it. Obviously you're going to eat this and it's going to boil down, but um, I like sort of really thin peel. So it's up to you what you prefer. If you prefer sort of thicker peel, thinner peel, Buddha. Anyway, you can choose what you want to do. I'm going to cut mine to about that. Now, I don't like really long strands in mine. I think that's too long. I think when you spread that on a bit of toast or whatever, it's going to be just a tad too long. So I'm going to basically take my pile, try and get most of it long ways, and then just press it again. So I'm basically left with sort of orange confetti. That to me is reasonable. Um, if you want to have longer bits, thicker bits, fat bits, it's really up to you. Just you do you. Whatever you want to eat, you cut to your heart's desire. Also, my hands are so wrinkly from all the orange, but we got to do. So I'll be back to you in two seconds for you, but what will be probably another 35 minutes for me. I'm going to cut all this and then, um, yeah, I'll be back. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, so we're back. Um, we have cut all of our peel. We have all the stuff left from the inside of the oranges. And we have all of the juice, right? Now what you need to do is you need to get some muslin cloth. If you don't have a muslin cloth, you can do what I'm doing and use a clean pillowcase. Um, and we have to pour all this stuff, that's like all the seeds, the pulp, the white stuff, all the this stuff we disregarded from squeezing all the juice. Take all of that and put it into this muslin cloth. Now what I'm going to do is do that over the pot because I think there might be some juice in here. So here is my pot that I'm going to use to boil everything. And I'm just going to plonk all that in. So we're going to tie this. Now use a pillowcase that you're not going to ever use. Um, this one I got from my wedding, it's a Miss and Mrs one. Apologies guys if you're watching this and you got me this. It's, I just never ever used it. Um, it was beautiful though. <laughs> um, I never used it. Um, I don't have string to tie this so I'm tying the actual pillowcase and I'm going to cut off the top here. So we've got our pulpy stuff in here in a, our muslin cloth. We're going to pour our peel in as well. We're going to pour our juice in. And then we're going to pour our water in. So we need 2.8 litres or 95 fluid ounces of water. So this is 50 fluid ounces because I don't have a jug big enough. And this is my 45 fluid ounces. Now, it goes without saying, you have to use the biggest pot that you have for this um, because it is a ton of liquid. So mine is just at the top, but it will reduce. So I'm gonna carry this over to my cooker and I'm gonna bring it to the boil. So right now, there's not really much to show you. It's on the cooker, it's gonna hopefully come to the boil. So I'll show you when it's boiling. Okay, so it's about to start boiling. I'm gonna zoom in and show you if I can. That's pretty much as far as I can go. Um, but it's starting to foam and it's starting to boil. So because my cooker is terrible, I'm going to just put it down straight away. Um, I've got an induction hob, so I don't think the heat reduces that quickly. But as soon as it starts to boil, just like that, 
it's not loads, it's just a start of boil, put it straight down the simmer. Now that I've reduced this from a boil to a simmer, it's not doing it yet, but it should be. But once it does, we're going to leave it for two hours to simmer. Strange. Anyway, yeah. So leave it now for two hours to simmer and I'll be back in two hours to tell you what happens next. So I'll see you then. Goodbye. Hello again. It's been two hours. Um, in the space of two hours what I've done is I've got a peg and I've pegged the um, pillowcase thing um, to the side of my pot because what I found was the pillowcase was in the middle and it was pressing a lot of the simmering so it's now at the side and it's fine. So anyway what we have now is a reduced almost by half liquid. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it off now and leave it to cool. Um, it doesn't have to cool entirely to be cold, it just has to be cool enough that it's not going to um, burn us when we put our hands in it. We have to be able to put our hands in it because what we're going to do is we're going to take this bag and we're going to squeeze it and get all the stuff out of the bag. So yeah, we're going to turn this off and wait until it's nice and cold. So that being said, I will be back in half an hour. Maybe see how it goes for there. I see you in half an hour. Hello again, impatient Sue here. Um, it's been like forty-five minutes, and it's still probably too hot to touch. It's like a really warm bath right now. Um, I'm, I'm too impatient. I'm just so I've got marigolds on because marigolds are really good at keeping out uh, heat when you're washing dishes and stuff. Uh, these are new, straight out of the packet. Ah, uh, well they've been washed, like I've washed my hands with them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use these. Um, so what we need to do is you need to take the bag out and you need to squeeze. And I'm going to zoom you in to show you this. But you're basically squeezing out all of the sort of syrupy goo um, because it's full of pectin and you want that stuff. So yeah, so I'll, I'll zoom you in. Well, I'll zoom you in as far as I can. So. I'm basically just squeezing all of the, the liquid that you can see pouring out of it. I'm just trying to squeeze all that out. Now, I won't lie to you, much like everything else in this recipe, this can take a while. But you do really want to get all of it out. Um, there's no real technique to this. Just squeeze until you get it all out. Now this is still pretty hot on my hands even though I've got gloves on so it's definitely not cool enough. Um, so if you were going to do this without using marigolds I would suggest wait another couple of hours until um, it was cold enough to handle. But right now, yeah, I mean, it's still burning me. You can see this like oily stuff. That's the stuff I'm after. So what I'm finding is working quite well. It's taking a section like this and then squeezing the one section. And then you'll find that when you've squeezed that section, there's still wood on the other side of that. So, squeeze. And because I squeezed that so hard, it's all coming out the other side. Okay, so we've squeezed as much pectin out of it as possible, um, and now we're left with a lukewarm orangey liquid. So we're going to pour our sugar in, all of it, which is a fair whack of sugar. 
and then we're going to put it back up onto the boil. Um, obviously, keep an eye on your sugary orangey liquid. Um, you kind of don't want it to burn or stick or anything, so you're keeping your spoon round the sides of your pot to ensure that it does its thing. At this point also your entire house will smell like oranges, yeah. which is not a bad thing. Oranges are kind of nice, um, but yeah, it really does make your house smell like oranges. A good thing to do at this point is to start thinking about sterilising your jars. So, um, if you are not a household that goes through a lot of jars a lot of the time, like we are, um, you can just buy jam jars. I got my jam jars for £1.49 from the range. So what we're going to do is sterilise them. To sterilise jars, you have to clean them, dry them, and then put them in the oven. And then with the lids, you have to clean them, dry them, and then we're going to boil them. When you are putting the marmalade into your jars, they have to go into jars that are warm, like straight out of the oven. So they take about 15 minutes in a preheated oven at 180 degrees. So 15 minutes before this is ready is when these need to go in. Which is strange timing because really what you're doing with this at this point is waiting for the sugar to dissolve and then bringing it to the boil. And once it's got to the boil, you're reducing the heat a little bit so that it's still kind of a rolling boil, um, but it has to reach temperature on your sugar thermometer. I would preheat the oven right now while we're waiting for the sugar to dissolve and then gauge it from there. So for your jam jars, they have to be on an oven proof tray, obviously. Set your jars out so they're not touching each other. Um, they're all fully clean and then they go in the oven like this. Sorry for the wobbly footage, I just couldn't be bothered moving the tripod. So I've got my sugar thermometer in my pot. It is attached to the edge, which is handy. Um, we're looking to get it to 105 degrees Celsius, which is here, or on this one it actually says jam, so it has to get to the jam. Um, sort of arrow. So we need to get it to there. So we're going to continue stirring. Uh, there's no sugary bits left in this. I can feel there's no granules or anything, so we are trying to get it to the boil just now and then we'll reduce it and then wait till it reaches 105. Right now it is at 80. So plenty of time for our jars which are currently in the oven and this pot of water which I'm going to top up and then turn up. And this is for our lids. So put them in upside down so that they sink. Make sure they're not on top of each other. And those lids will go in the boil and then they will be sterilised as well. Um, as I said before, you do have to pour the hot marmalade liquid into the hot jars out of the oven and then put the hot lids on. So if you have those oven gloves that actually have fingers, then you're in luck. If you don't, it may be worth investing in them to make your life easier. Um, she says, well, she doesn't own any. I don't have any. Um, I'm just going to use tea towels and um, asbestos fingers because I'm a lady and I tend to have asbestos fingers. I just thought I'd show you quickly what the lids look like um, in the pot. So just upside down like that so they all sink um, and it's starting to boil now, so yeah. Now it's really important to sterilise your jars. Um, if you don't sterilise your jars, you can be putting bacteria into the marmalade, it could go mouldy, you could give someone a very upset tummy if you're feeding anyone your own homemade marmalade. Um, I am giving my marmalade to my grands and anyone else who might fancy it. Um, so I really don't want to make them sick, you know. While I'm waiting for this to reach temperature, I'm going to move the camera back over there um, so that it's facing the sort of jarring station because all you're going to miss from this is it reaches temperature and then you turn off the heat 
and let it cool for 10 minutes and then if you get any scum, just wipe the scum off. So before when I said to take the scum off the top, the scum is this white stuff here. And all I'm doing is using a metal spoon to attempt to scoop up. As you can see, it's quite difficult to scoop it up and not take away a lot of what you're trying to do, but just do your best. As I always say, you can always do your best. Right, so I've poured the pot into there. I've got a ladle in there now because I feel like ladling initially while the jug's malleable and hot and spill is a good idea. Right, so I'm going to get the lid. Okay. Okay. Right, so the lids okay. have been boiling and they need to dry, but they'll dry pretty much straight away anyway because, oh shit, because they're hot, they put them that way. Oh, I'm obviously great at this. It's the uh, handling of red hot glass with no. Um, when you use a tea towel? Yeah, of course, but like. Most people have those finger, what, like oven gloves that people have them. Okay. Right. So, assume the position. Right. Assume the position. Okay. And they're not going to break. Well, everywhere I looked online says to do this, so. Okay. They're not going to shatter and explode in the fucking. <laughs> Look at you moving away as if they're a bomb. Right. Maybe. I mean, we're pouring red hot liquid into a red hot jar with a red hot lid. Should be alright. Right. Are you sure? No. Right, let's go. Fuck this. I like how you like fuck this. What, what are you doing? Are you covering your face? I just don't want them to fucking explode. I mean, I'm handling them. Okay. Bish. Bish. Okay, so what am I doing? Right, you're being patient for a fucking second to tell you. Right, so take a tea towel. Okay. And help me hold this in place okay. while I pour. Wait a minute, this is cold, so why do I need to do that? Because this is not. Right, okay. So. This is going to be fucking everywhere. Oh, just fuck it, just go for it. That doesn't sound nice. Is this sizzling because the jar's red, red hot? Okay. And it's to go at the very top. Right, remove the, the thing. Okay. And then put it down and then put a lid on for me. Then no roasting. Yes, use your pito. Oh for fuck. No they're not. Alright, well use your hands in, but the fucking jar's lost in mind. Aye, I know, right, fucking give me a wee minute. <laughs> Jesus. Right there. Thank you kindly. Right. That's one done. Only a million more to go. Right, so. Turned into marmalade after a while. Aye, it'll solidify. So it will. Marmalade. Marmalade. Sorry. Why do you keep saying this? Fuck no, I think Boris Johnson said it once. One time. Aye. Wait, I could probably pour this now rather than having to. It may be a lot faster. Let's give it a try. Right, fuck it, good. Right. <clears throat> a lovely noise. <laughs> I know it's great, innit? Should I upgrade? Aye, let's put lids on. Aye. I'm just going to put a wee bit more in that because it's supposed to be filled to the very, very top. Okay. So there's no room for bacteria. You just need to tighten it. 
Many did you think is? I know, I know. Right, well, fuck, nearly grabbed that. <laughs> oh! Yeah. Uh, don't grab it. Right. Right. Hold in place, please. In place, I said. Oh, no. <gasps> Shit. Touch it. Aye. You alright? Aye, I bumped my horn. It's fine. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to take a jar. Uh huh. And you need to take it, obviously, hold it, ensure it's fully thingy, and okay. then turn it upside down and back again. And the reason you're doing that is because the hot stuff has to touch the top of the lid to kill any bacteria on top of the lid, just anything that's left. But there probably won't be any left because we boiled the absolute living fuck out of it. <laughs> And turn it upside down. There's a bacteria, fuck it now. Alright, so if you don't sterilise your jars and you don't sterilise your lids um, and you don't tip it upside down, oh that one's a bit skew riff, I think that one's double threaded, um, then you run the risk of bacteria being in your jars and your lids, which means your stuff can either go mouldy or you can actually give people food poisoning. What? Actual fuck's sake. Aye. Can you test that one for me? Because that one seemed a bit loose when I was trying to. A bit loose. I like when I was trying to tighten it. It did still seem a bit loose, like it wasn't fully threading. But I think I did. It. I think I fixed it. But just because you're stronger than me. No, oh, no. Oh, it's one of the ones. One of the ones, but. One of the ones, but it's just popping out of the thread. Right. You'll need to lean over while you do it. In the name of fuck. Ah, you've spilled it. <laughs> I'm burning my fucking hand. Put it down then. Sharp. Just let me fucking do it. Oh, you're so good. Nah, it's one of the ones. It's not doing it. Right, smash it. Thanks very much. No worries. I appreciate your help. That's good. Cool. So, you should be left with something that looks like this. Um, it will solidify in the jars after a while, you just need to leave it be. So, we're going to do that now. We're just going to leave them alone. So, I recommend you leave these to cool overnight. This one has a goth lid, so I'm going to open this one for you tomorrow and show you what it looks like, show you the consistency, and I might even put it on toast. So, yeah. Okay, so here is my marmalade that I've like left overnight. This jar is a little bit sticky because this jar is the one where the lid wouldn't go on properly. So this is uh, the aftermath of us trying to actually get the lid on with red hot marmalade, but yeah, so this is going to be the tester jar. The other jars look almost the same pretty much, um, they just have the lid secured on. So they have not been opened since they have had the lid, the sterilised lid put on last night. Um, the other ones don't, they haven't been opened. So, we're going to open this, I'm going to show you what it looks like, and we're going to spread it on some bread and spread it on some toast. Just to show you what it looks like, if you're interested. I don't know, you know what marmalade is, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is the consistency of it. It's kind of jelly-like. Um, this marmalade, all the peel has went to the top on this one. So that's why it is primarily peel on there. So we'll scoop that onto our bread. So. That is my marmalade on a piece of bread, if you're interested. I feel a bit daft doing this, but a lot of the feedback I get is that you want to see me cutting things or using things, so we're going to do that with the marmalade. A wee bit of ASMR for you there. Personally, I think marmalade is much better on toast, but whatever. It's your personal choice, isn't it? And there you have it. Marmalade on toast, marmalade on bread. Obviously, you can put marmalade in cakes, you can put it in the inside of your cakes, you can use it to put on the outside of cakes to put icing on top of. Um, there's tons of things you can do with marmalade, um, but yeah. 
Thanks for coming to watch me make marmalade. It did take me the full day. I was in my jammies, I was chilled. Um, it's a very lazy day sort of thing to do. If you make marmalade and follow this recipe, please send me pictures of your marmalade or tell me if you did anything different. The one thing I would probably do different is probably not put the lime in there. I thought it would add a nice taste, it didn't add anything. So don't bother putting lime in. If you liked this video and you found it helpful in any way, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, if you didn't, and that's alright and you're still here, then thanks for still watching even though you don't like it. Um, I promise that the next video won't be like a full day's worth of work. Hopefully I'm going to make something easy, like a brownie, maybe a loaf cake of some kind, I don't know. Something lovely anyway, and something that's maybe going to take half an hour at most to prep and cook so that you can eat it rather than taking a full day. Because I understand not everyone's got a full day to make marmalade, um, but I wanted to make it and show you anyway. Thanks again for coming and all links to other things are down below. I hate telling you all the time, so if you're interested in anything, it's in the description, as well as the recipe for this. So yeah, thanks very much for coming and I'll see you later. Bye.